up, everybody? What's uh, up, everyone? Welcome uh, to uh, Moral Combat. Yeah, another episode of Moral Combat, episode 39. My name is Zach. And I'm Nathan. This is a podcast where we talk about mainly the trauma that we've been through mm -hmm. as individuals, as siblings, mm -hmm. and our upbringing, and that upbringing being extremely religious. Very religious. Um, for like the last 30 episodes, mm -hmm. um, we've talked about our religious trauma and the syndromes that we have from it. Um, but I don't know, Zach, what do, you, what do you say? Have you been healing from this, talking about it? Oh, on this podcast, definitely. This is the most healing I've ever done. It's unique that, you know, the last episode we broke the news of uh, Moral mm -hmm. Combat being our new name. Yeah. And Chantel wasn't with us, but today she is. Chantel is in the house. Um, and so if you didn't believe it last week, you're going to believe it this week because she's in-house rebranding as we are podcasting. So mm -hmm. um, no uh, oxymoron here, but God bless you. Chantel, yes. God bless you. Yes. Can't believe she's still here. And from here, <laughs> I'm seeing... <laughs> oh, yeah, she's, she's, here. she's here to stay. Um, uh, I can see that yellow and the purple. And we're not going to say too much, but, you know, you can kind of see on her production camera there that uh, maybe a little sneak peeks here and there when, yeah. I, when I when I clip to it, when I'm editing this tomorrow. Yes. Um, but yeah, welcome to Moral Combat. Zachary, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm pretty beat today. Yeah. Yeah, you're beat. What does I'm that mean? Like, beat. like, like a, like a, like you're like beaten up. I'm exhausted. I'm depleted. I'm exhausted. You're depleted. Yes. You're tired. Mm -hmm. um, How okay. are you today? How are you doing today? I don't know. I feel uh, the same as you. I feel very tired. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know. Actually, I'm not tired at all. Um, I slept, not the greatest, but I did sleep like five hours, and I woke up at like five thirty, and I couldn't get back to sleep till like seven thirty, and. Woke up with a good amount of anxiety mm -hmm. and uh, feeling a little depressed. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess you could say I was depleted. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm sunburned. Yeah. You can see it on my face. Maybe you can't, but I like I've had really bad allergies. So I do have uh, some uh, tissues some to tissues the left, just in stuff. case. Just in case I have another. I've been having sneezing attacks all day. Yeah, you're having a lot yesterday, too. A lot yesterday. Yeah. Um, but yeah, overall, it's been a um, it's been a really good day. Mm -hmm. I feel... Um, I've been uh, contemplating a lot, having a lot of thoughts, and then also like staying centered. I had a really good workout today. Um, it's Sunday, so it's normally Sunday fun day. Today was more like sun Sunday internal day. Yeah. We woke up on the inside. It was more just like sun day. Sun. Yeah. It's a Sunday. It's a Sunday. Yeah. I did put on a mix throughout the whole house this morning, and I actually like uh, searched a mix that was like... Sunday happiness <laughs> and it was like a pre-made mix on Spotify that was like my Sunday it was like a Sunday happy mix made for me it was, nice I don't know. did it make you feel happier the first song was like a song that had the lyrics Sunday and fun and it was just like, You're like now I'm having fun and I was it's a like you know I'm not feeling it but this is helping <laughs> music seems to always help me it's something I've been doing uh, for like the last like three weeks or so is have lo-fi hip-hop playing pretty consistently throughout the entire yeah. house. Um, and I'm wondering if it's like unhealthy. Why? Because silence is starting to become unbearable for me. Oh, I see. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm starting to be like, oh my gosh, music's not playing. I mean, silence. I mean, what do you mean by, I mean, is it because, oh, because you're getting so used to having music on all the time. Yeah. But not not singing music because singing music is too distracting for me to do anything to. Yeah. So it's more of just like lo-fi beats. I used to study to them when I was in, uh, school to be a nurse all, all like the tough classes i would just have lo-fi hip-hop in my headphones and just study like crazy well i was i was gonna say like you know do you because so, so it helps having lo-fi in the background helps you focus or helps you like get sh shit done or it helps me just not get lost in your thoughts my thoughts yeah so it keeps your thoughts quieter yeah interesting yeah would you say that like are you are you scared you said scared maybe you're like nervous like is it is lo-fi becoming a like disassociative piece of art so even if that's you know um i wouldn't say it's dissociating i think it's just um calms the mind it's just, I, it, it, I feel like it does something with my adhd um and there are studies on but people with adhd like to consistently listen to music or listen to podcasts listen to something yeah um but it helps my brain feel a little smoother in my thoughts 
And so like when I, if I wake up and music's not playing, the second I put music on, I'll be a little more okay with just sitting and staring. And then I'll be like, I should get up and do something. And then I'll go do something. Whereas when in silence, I'll just be like, I, I think I have anxiety right now. Yeah. I mean, you are all vibrations, buddy. Yes, sir. So you're just connecting with the, you know, sound is everything. Mm -hmm. Sound is beautiful. Mm. You know, uh, being in silence, you are nothing but your thoughts and you can hear your heartbeat like dum dum mm -hmm. dum dum. It's like the sound beat of your life. And sometimes, life. sometimes silence is really nice. Sometimes I like to just sit in my backyard and hear silence and just listen. I mean, I've been meditating a lot more and it's been tougher. Like this last week, I have not meditated as much, haven't done much yoga. Like I've said on past podcasts, like I was doing, and I'm really learning the, uh, the nature of beast, which is just kind of like, it's really hard to climb on top of that elephant and like, or feels that way. Like I'm climbing on top of an elephant and trying to like ride some sort of like animal because deep breathing and meditating with silence is, can be excruciating sometimes. Mm scary like i don't want to do this and it's like thoughts come in like and they're traumatic thoughts and some days are harder um but yeah i've been i've been definitely because i listen to music all the time too mm. i've been definitely sitting in more silence like purposefully sitting in silence and listening to my breath and feeling the breath you know and having like doing some gratitude prayers during those times and sort of like trying when, when bad thoughts hit me i'm like combating those thoughts with um gratitude you know like thanking things in the universe thanking the things in our planet and that really helps that mm. really, it's like a biohack having gratitude is like a biohack to keep those bad thoughts in check mm. keeps you more centered at least for me yeah you've been saying that a lot recently gratitude is amazing you've been, you've been flowing back to that i've been trying to do it when i'm having like a dark moment just to start saying what i'm grateful for it's just hard. I think like when I first started meditating, I mean, I'm not doing it that much, you know, but I am doing it. And I think like when I first started, it was like a two, two minutes, mm -hmm. you know, okay, two minutes, I'm done. Yeah. And now I'm like 15, 20 minutes sometimes, which is like crazy. Yeah. You know, thinking like baby steps to baby steps to four o'clock. Baby steps to four o'clock. Baby steps to four o'clock. That's a what about Bob quote. Mm -hmm. um, but let me ask you, Zach. Yeah. Why are you so depleted today? I'm depleted today because uh, you and I had quite the day yesterday. We and did. We, um, we did. So we, we took, know why we're tired. <laughs> <laughs> we took a therapeutic dose of psilocybin. Yes, we did. Together. Yeah, together. For the first time in our lives. Mm -hmm. Give it to me. Yes. For us to be able to do that is... Um, for us, because we yeah. know each other and I know you, mm -hmm. that it, this is the definition of healing in action. Yeah. It's like the amount of responsibility we've taken over our lives to be able to act together by like doing a plant medicine like that, which is wildly intense some of the times, which it was. It was mm -hmm. like, yeah, it was quite a beautiful day. And so I know that the focus of today's um, episode it's kind of centered around self-care versus self-love, mm -hmm. whether it's like one versus the other. We're talking, I think, a little bit of both, but really we're focusing on self-love mm -hmm. today. And we decided to um, embark on some self-love together. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, like waking up this morning with the anxiety and depression. It's another reminder that when you do a therapeutic dose, and maybe this isn't for everybody, but you have like your dopamine's higher and your serotonin's higher and it's like eight hours and we little water and uh so waking up today was like a back to earth yeah <laughs> you know we went to the moon and it came back yeah quite depleted quite um, exhausted but yeah. it all feels like part of the process mm -hmm. and it feels like part of the medicine mm -hmm. and yesterday was extremely medicinal with mm -hmm. you and so when you and I were talking about what the hell we want to talk about today, like today has been such a day of re reintegration. Mm -hmm. I mean, we went to bed texting each other. Had a great day, man. I love you so much. I was like, thank you, man, for bringing the medicine. <laughs> and then we woke up and you're like, how are you feeling? And I was like, bad. And you were like, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to bed texting each other and it was like next morning. Okay. All right. It was funny. I was going to text you and just be like, not doing well today. How you doing? I was going to straight say it. And then I was like, mm, I'm going to leave that. I'm not doing well. I'm just going to see how he's doing. Which is powerful. Yeah. Because it's like, we've talked about this. That's a really amazing thing to say because mm -hmm. it's like, I think maybe you 
you don't want to be alone in your pain. Mm. So if like you texted me and I was like, dude, I've never felt better. You'd be like, oh God, <laughs> you don't want me to be in pain. I was expecting you to be like, oh dude, I'm an afterglow and I feel amazing. <laughs> I was so expecting that text. And I was just like, I'm fucking different. <laughs> I'm different. Yeah, I'm different, dude. No, yeah, I think we're all pretty similar. Yeah. I think when you choose to um, leave this reality. Yeah. Or maybe not even leave. When you choose to be in a, change the dimension or change, yeah, change the reality. Um, it's always hard coming back. Oh, yeah. You know, this, this reality is so limited. And then when you're in that reality, there's a lot less limitations. There's yeah. a lot more potential. Yeah. And we must have had eight hours of conversation. Yeah. It was like an eight hour podcast. It was. On multiple levels. Yeah. Very personal. Would be the most vulnerable podcast in history, I would think. Yeah. And a lot yesterday we were talking about, it was like, you want to go podcast right now? It's like, <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. <laughs> um, yeah. We walked in here at one point, like four hours in, fully, fully gone, but like in it at that point. So you just kind of accept that, that life. And uh, just looking at the podcast, I was like, if everything was set up. Yeah, if, I, if maybe everything I, was set up and we could just have to hit record, didn't have to do anything because then maybe I could sit and we could get lost in it. But it was like to set it up would be hellish and right. impossible. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I don't think I'd be able to get it set up. No, yeah, it would. I mean, something about psilocybin is like you see the graininess of life. Yeah, everything like you can see the the soil looks like you're not scared of it. Yeah, it's not necessarily gross, but you're just like, oh my gosh, I. You can like see how grainy everything is. Yeah. And like when the grains move, it's like, ah. yeah. so it's just like everything was like feeling kind of dirty. But I, I was thinking about that was, um, you know, like on uh, when newscasters are standing in front of like a sports stadium or something and they're like, we're here live and yeah. they just won. And there's always like, like audience people that are like drunk or whatever. And they're yeah. like coming over the camera like, we fucking won. And like, free. I was like, I was thinking like, that's how it would feel. Where if everything was recording, we would like walk in here and I'd be like, kind of stumble in and be like, <laughs> so um, right now, it, you know, it's kind of like one of those people where it'd be like really difficult to like jump into this headspace. But I, I remember walking to the garage and seeing the podcast and just feeling all this warmth coming yeah, from it, this area. There was a lot of warmth over here. It was so comforting looking. It was like, and you even said that you were like, well, it looks really comfortable over there. Yeah. I was like, it does. I was like, that was like a really positive thing to like see that and feel like. I'm so happy we don't have to do that till tomorrow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we did some self love and it was an adventure. And I think that uh, when when I say reintegration, this is part of it. Um, when I went on my retreat and came back and had about five days of reintegration, you know, I spent those five days writing. Mm. And I still have to finish that writing, but um, uh, that's really uh, like really helped. And I would think like, how could I ever remember anything from this like, experience? And um, and so writing really helped like reintegrate. Man, are you gonna keep popping up? Sorry, like, dude. Up, was that fifty knuckles? Yeah, 50, we're on camera right now, dude. Who <laughs> does that? God, um, I'll let that go. Thanks, thanks for letting that one go. I won't won't happen again. Um. But yeah, it's like writing really like I've been encouraged by like different teachers to be like, start writing. Yeah. If you're feeling anxiety, write. If you're feeling depressed, write. If you're feeling super happy, write about mm -hmm. it. If you had a really amazing day, write about it. And I'm like, I don't want to write. So I feel like I've like really started writing and I feel like this is kind of like a version of that. Yeah. We're like writing right now if we want to talk about it. Yeah. And no, um, totally. It's going to be recorded and it's going to be online for all the world to see. Mm -hmm. Um. If you want to watch it yeah. <laughs> or listen to it. Yeah. And then I was even thinking like all of these have transcripts. Yeah. You know? And so it's like, it is in writing. Yeah. And it's like a beautiful, this is a beautiful way to like document mm -hmm. our experience together. Yeah. Um, and, and it's not just you documenting it or me documenting it. It's us documenting it together. Everything was together. Exactly. Um, and it was surreal. Why don't we just get into it? Why don't we just tell everybody our experience of yesterday? Jump in, man. So um, I woke up. And uh, brushed I did, my teeth. I brushed my teeth. I took a shot. <laughs> uh, I put some socks on, and then no. Um, the night before, I was uh, actually the whole day before. I was shooting a huge photo shoot, turned into video shoot, 
at Chantel's house yeah, over maybe. here doing a big... Um, Chantel's busy. She's a busy girl. She works with too many people. Let's just say that. Um, <laughs> she's great. Yeah, she's wonderful. She's good at what she does. <laughs> but uh, we shot for... We also microdosed too, which probably gave us the energy to go six hours straight of just shooting. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and we got more content than I think I've ever gotten in my life on for just one album cover and then now possibly a lot of short music video content. Which is amazing. And, yeah. And it was really fun. And so I was just like flying off that, but also really beat from that day, knowing going into Saturday that me and I were going to do what we did. And so I kind of woke up and I wasn't really feeling that good because I snacked super hard the night before and ate a bunch of junk food, ate a bunch of spicy chips. And so when I woke up, I was like, yeah, let's put a bunch of psilocybin in my stomach. That's going to feel good. <laughs> and so when I was driving into your house, I was like, well, I'm not going to back out. I want to do this with you. We've talked about it for like two weeks now. And I was like, we're doing it. I don't really care. Like, let's just go into it. And I was, I felt good, but I was also really tired and beat. And so when I showed up, I was a little nervous about going into that experience, kind of like my stomach already a little upset and I feeling good. But then um, I measured everything out for us and we put it in lemon juice. It's called lemon teching. Yep. It's supposed to break the psilocybin down into psilocyan and make the effects quicker and easier to digest and just uh, more in, uh, integrative experience inner. And uh, so uh, we let that sit for about an hour. You took a shower and then we sat outside or oh, we put a bunch of water into a jar with it. All the chunky yumminess some honey. and some honey just to make it a little easier to go down. And that then, magic juice. Yeah. We sat in your uh, garden out here on these two beautiful chairs. In the and sun. And sat there for a moment and uh, you said your intentions because uh, we both kind of came into it with some therapeutic intentions because it is a medicine. We weren't trying to just trip to have a trippy day, you know. No, it was, was all about the medicine. All about the medicine and the, ther the therapy behind it. And so you stated your intentions and uh, we took a sip and then I stated mine. We took a sip and then that kind of started the journey. And we uh, sat in your garden for what felt like a good 45 minutes, kind of slowly taking good amounts of sips here and there, quickly feeling the digestion and you, uh, the meditative self you're starting to become, you were like, I'm going to get into my Zen palace and legit sat. And I was like, I can't do that right now. My stomach's killing me. <laughs> and so I was walking around your garden and just trying to get my head straight. Um, it's not my first time doing, I mean, it's my first time doing that much, but it was my first time doing a lot. And so I knew that it's like, at some point this is going to pass and it's going to be different. But for that good hour, it was pretty tough. Yeah. And, and, uh, uh, heavy. Um, you want anything you want to say about that? Yeah. I mean, I think you like made a really good point that I have, uh, you know, not ingested anything that's been psychoactive into my body since my retreat. And, um, and so I'm just very sober now mm -hmm. and very clean and I eat all organic and no processed foods. And I drink four liters of water a day and I'm working out and I, I had such a crazy work week. And so I was I just felt very soft and very prepared on like the purpose and the reason why I'm using plant medicine, mm -hmm. you know, like there's a lot of healing that comes and there's some trauma that gets brought up and it's like not necessarily easy, but it's really beautiful and it's trusting the process. Mm. And, um, and, but yeah, I've, I've uh, definitely like when I went into this, I was like really wanting to see if you were going to be able to connect with me on like, you know, um, just being really open to the meditative and deep breathing and like focusing on our energies and closing our eyes. And I learned so much at this retreat on that process and how beneficial it is. But it's also what I like to call the goofy part of life. Mm -hmm. I never thought I'd be this person. I used to always make fun of the hippies, you know, <laughs> and like here I am like living the life that I used to make fun of. Mm -hmm. And so, and you and I are in different places. We're also different people mm -hmm. and we're brothers and uh or siblings really right and so um i uh knew that things weren't going to be like if me and my fiance did it mm -hmm. um and it was this wasn't a retreat this was like me and you doing something for the first time of our lives mm -hmm. and we have a history of horrible times together and mm -hmm. a history of just glorious times together and it all comes from like when we were kids that mm -hmm. played really well for like 10 to 12 years all the time together and uh, and so sitting there with you was like, you know, and I like started to do my speech, like, mm -hmm. okay, like as the medicine started to work, I was like, so Zach, you know, I, I just want you to like, try, just try this with me. 
I closed my eyes and I was like, I want you to think of like the fire that's in your heart. And every single breath we breathe, we're going to breathe into that heart. And I want you to feel that energy and just use your imagination, which your imagination is the number one greatest tool you have. And you I didn't you, say any of this. You said I, didn't. I said oh, all I of this. I, I know you didn't because this is where I realized, that's what my point is. As I was saying these things to you and I was feeling very like ready to be connected to myself and like meditative. And I was like telling you to like imagine the energy that comes from the top of your head. Oh, it I comes this. down like yeah, an yeah. umbrella and it comes down to your feet and it goes through your feet, through your knees and down into your like groin area. And then it hits your lower spine and then just imagine that chakra that's there. It shoots up through your spine, back to your heart, and it shoots back down. So I'm saying all these things, and I'm like really getting into it. And I'm starting to feel really like in my zone. And so I'm, and I quit speaking or whatever. And I think you're right there with me, right? And I'm just like, okay. So I like kind of like five, maybe ten minutes go by, and I'm like peek open a little bit, and you're not there. And I'm like, okay. In that moment, I was like, when you weren't there, I was like, Nathan. You're doing this with Zach. You're not alone. You're not with your fiance. You're not at a retreat. You got to get on. Like, this is a together plan. Yeah. And I was like, because I was ready just to dip out. And yeah. Like, spend like an hour just like there. Yeah. And I, all I saw, like, through all these huge potato bushes in my garden, right, was like your head. Yep. Just the top of your, like, curve of your hair. And you were like, like, leaning over and the potato plants are behind you and the cucumber plants are in front of you. And you're just like, all I see is your head. And I'm like. We're, we're in this together. So I just stood up and I was like, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> and in that moment, I was like, this is, this is what it's all about. This is about like who you do it with really matters. Yeah. And it's about joining, like feeling each other's energy and not like dipping out and not trying to be, make anything what it's not supposed. It's just supposed mm-hmm. to be like, accept the process and whatever that process is. It's like, I don't want to be alone in this. And, uh, and so that was like a unique moment for mm-hmm. me to be like, Oh yeah, that's right. So Zach's in a different place than me. We're in different places in life and we're choosing to do something really like healing together. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I wasn't, I didn't have any digestive problems. It yeah. Really, you are totally fine. Yeah. And I think that's just a testament to like, just, you know, I really think it is man, the diet I have and like no caffeine anymore and, uh, no processed foods and all these things. So I think like it, it just digested really well. Um, yeah. So that was like a unique experience for me, like mm-hmm. realizing that I wanted to be like in my Zen, but then also realizing that I didn't want to be alone mm-hmm. and I wanted to be part of the adventure. And so I was like, oh, today's bit is going to be an adventure. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was. And it was. So then what was wild was I think it took about 30 minutes and then it was like, boom, we're here. Well, it, yeah, uh, it, when you lemon tech like that, you you feel the come on pretty quick quicker than if you just took it. Um, but it's just different. It's like, oh yeah, colors are more vibrant. Oh, okay, okay. Everything's everything's changing a little bit. But then w- when it hits you, it's like this overwhelming, like, oh. Yeah. Okay. And we're and <laughs> yeah. and we're we're taking off. Yeah. And so for me, it's like very quickly it was just kind of like, hey, we gotta, we gotta move. Mm-hmm. I started moving around the the backyard and then you were like moving in the backyard and you like went to the back where we're thinking about starting a greenhouse and you were like, this is where you, this is where you need a greenhouse. <sighs> and I was just like, we got to get out of here, man. <laughs> yeah. We got to go. We got to walk. I was like, let's get, the, you were like, let's get the dogs. Like, I was like, are you sure you want, you want to get the dogs? And I was like, of course we get the dogs. Well, no. So what I said, I, I was like, we should just go on a walk or something so that we're moving. And by the time we really come on, we're at least moving and we're outside um, and I, you tell me about the field. I remember, the I, field. I, I remember thinking the field and I was like, oh, I remember you walked there the last time you did it. Can't be too far away. That's my first thought. Yeah. It can't be too far away and it can't be too populated because it's like you went there last time. Right. And uh, just didn't, had no idea. And so we get the dogs ready to go and fully starting to feel everything. And we're walking and as we're walking, it's like, yep, we're feeling it. And then it's like, wait, we're going towards the city, the busy part. And it's like, oh, so many crosswalks yeah. we had to go through. But um, yeah, that's when just the adventure started. The adventure to, started pretty quickly. Yeah. And you know when Zach starts to adventure, when his body turns into like Gumby. Yep. <laughs> you know, like your your shoulders went really low. Yeah. Your arms became ape-like. <laughs> you're kind of like, you're kind of like Bigfoot. You're yeah. like a Sasquatch where you were just kind of like, what is walking? <laughs> what are, what are spines? Because you have really bad back pain. Yeah. And so like. I just was like, oh my gosh, Zach's becoming like this like Sasquatch. Meanwhile, I feel like a cat where I'm like, like very like moving, very like sly and okay. Mm -hmm. And so like, definitely it was like 
really um, powerful medicine. But we did a therapeutic dose. It yeah. was very obvious in that moment. Yeah, it was very obvious. That it's like, yeah, we're going to, this is yeah. a therapeutic dose. Yeah. Uh, but uh, instantly, the second I started, we started that walk, but then we started feeling it and been forcing ourselves into to kind of society, but just walking, not really like in society, just walking, having to do crosswalks, having to interact with cars and things. Yeah, people working in their people gardens. People working and, and just the, the reality of, oh yeah, there's a world out here and they're all functioning and we are not fully functioning right now. You know, it's like, like that. Or we reality. are, it's just in a different reality. Exactly. Um, but Perceiving it, things differently. It instantly started to lead to just really deep, interesting conversations but because we started to get so affected it just let for me at least and both of us led to just crying laughter on pretty yeah. much every single yeah. topic and yeah. everything instantly inner children came out yeah it was like oh my god we're like eight and ten years old we're like kids yeah. and uh yeah and so we like get to the first crosswalk and it's a very busy street and there's all these cars going by and it's immediately like we're in star wars like look at all these like every yeah. truck i pass it's like it's this is a wart rock, like, warthog from yeah, halo exactly. these are halo trucks yeah it's like why do people have trucks and you made this like when your first funny comment was like you know alex asked me if i'd ever get a truck and i was like no but i definitely get a trailer and when you said that i just was like dying i was like you would totally be a trailer guy like on the back of your ford focus yeah. like mm -hmm. <laughs> the trailer i'm never gonna get a truck couch off craigslist <laughs> And um, yeah, and then we started walking and uh, made the first crosswalk. And it's weird because I feel like the, when you take, like, if you were to be in an outer, if you were to be in a rocket ship or yeah. anywhere and you were going to leave the planet, um, it's a little bit overwhelming, right? Because yeah. it's like, everything's fine, but you're just taking in it all. Like everything's clearly changing at like more and yeah. changing more. And so like, every moment is like this what I call the snapshots of energy. Mm -hmm. Every moment's just a snapshot of energy. And then instantaneously, the next moment's a snapshot of energy. And so being on this medicine, it's like, you're so aware of these, everything's changing all the time. Mm. Nothing stays the same. So these like powerful sayings and these things that I live by become the reality where it's like, sometimes life doesn't feel like things are changing all the time. It's so stagnant. I know things are temporary, but it feels like it's forever. Mm. And so like in those moments when you're like taking off, you're like, wow, things are changing rapidly fast <laughs> all the time. And there's like this feeling of like, I wonder, I wonder how long this is going to take. And already I was like contemplating like, the, like an hour in, I was like, I wonder how long we're going to be going through this. <laughs> and it would be like, I would say something and you would always have these really, you always have like powerful, really amazing things that you say mm. that are like, I, like somebody like passes us and I'll, and I'll say something like, man, people are just like so interesting. And you'll be like, we're interesting. And I'm like, oh, that's right. We're just people too. Cause I'll like, you know, judge or like feel this thing. Like humans are like interesting. I can't, I don't want to be around humans. And you'll be like, yeah, we're humans. We're weird. I'm like, oh, that's right. We're just a part of the mess here. Like we're all part of like this functioning thing. And so in my neighborhood, as you start to walk, it's uh, packed with just these old homes that were built, like not too old, but like some of them 1920s, yeah. but most of them 1940s, yeah. like right after World War II. Pretty old. It's pretty old. Right after World War II, like all the money in like suburbia that yeah. started. So it was like old 1940s suburbia and you just have these houses that have been there and that have had a lot of add-ons and a lot of construction and they're all different. And every single home is just a very different world. Mm. And I remember like the first conversation we got into was like looking at these houses and the mailboxes and like every yard and fence and like the trees. And it was just kind of like, all I said was something around the lines of like, isn't it wild that every single house is another like small planet or world that's gated off mm -hmm. where they're just living their lives in there right now. Mm -hmm. And we're just out here walking by, like kind of peeking into these new, like these different worlds that people are living. Yeah. And I don't even know how we got in this conversation, but you were basically crying at this point, yeah. kind of like drooling out your eyes, right? And I'm like feeling not there yet. I'm, yeah. not, there. I'm not at the drool part yet because you're just like, <laughs> and uh, and somehow we got on the topic of like the housing market, and it wasn't about the housing market. You were just like, yeah, dude, it's just crazy how like this has value. And that has value. And I just started like busting up and we just started like losing our shit on like how everything's about value. Well, we were talking about American culture. American culture. Yeah, I think it came from that 
big truck we passed and you're like, who needs that? Oh, right. And I was like, you need nobody. I was like, it just proves you have value. And then it was like, everyone has value. That's all American society is. You walk out and you go, see, look, I have value. (laughs) You have value. It's like all about value. And we started just dying on that topic. This whole idea of like, and that's like when the ego starts to strip down, society starts to strip down and you start to like, we started to really think of just like, everything and like I own this home you want to buy a home mm-hmm. so we talk so much about the housing market and you know how like what you want and this and that and here we are like busting up laughing at how fucking ridiculous <laughs> that everything in life has value and money and it's like there's always a value to things yeah and that was just so funny yeah it's like we're so weird yeah <laughs> like humans are so funny that we just have to put value on things and it's so there's so many limitations that what you can and can't buy based on like how much something is valuable and that's when it really started to hit me. Mm-hmm. And we finally made it through the neighborhood and we get to the underpass. And it was like, that's an intense part of the walk. That was the, yeah, it was very intense. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, like underpasses are always a little bit yeah. interesting, you know, because it's just like, <laughs> yeah. and you're just like kind of colder. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, and so like, it's true. Our conversation, I don't mean, it's hard to even remember so much of the conversation we had on the walk. Well, that was right before we got to the field. Yeah. And, um, which real quick, I might to, just to remind, you can go back and I don't remember what episode it is, but I did share a huge part yeah. of my last experience. Where and I, I, I did a clip of it. It's right when I started doing clips. Right. Um, yeah. So you can just go to our clips and legit, it's like Nate's psychedelic We're, experience or something. The same field, the same tree that I talk about. And I told Zach, I was like, when, before we went on this walk, I was like, why don't we just go to the field? And I'll take you to, to my tree. To the tree, yeah. And then I was like, not my tree, our tree, everyone's <laughs> tree. Let me take you to the tree that has the spot that I was talking about where it'd be a fun TV show that you could go through the portal. Yeah. And uh, uh, and you were like, yeah, let's go there. And so the whole mission was like, we're going to that field with the dogs where yeah. we can let them off the leash. It's right by the fairgrounds. It's right by, like, it's this huge open field. And it's just like filled with like mountains of our valley all yeah. surrounding us. It's just like such a unique walk of being in suburbia in the city and then bam, you're just in this open field. Mm. Um, and so we finally make it to this field. We let the dogs off and the grass is like so high. You yeah. know, it's like this, I always like have this memory, but in the movie Gladiator, you know, like pretty sad scene where when he's walking in the grass and, and his he has families. His, and his hands, yeah. and he puts his hand, it's always that scene they show or that memory. That's what he remembers is his hand going through the grass. And so the field is like that. The grass is really high to where you can like put your hand down and just mm-hmm. feel the top of like, I don't even know what, what it, I guess what it is. It's yeah. like some sort of, feels like grain grass mm-hmm. or whatever. So we get out there and there's these two big, huge, I think they're oak trees, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, gigantic trees. And I'm just like, there's the tree. And the dog is just go running like, and your dog Maya's, you know, this cute little tiny thing. Mm-hmm. And my dog Atmore is, you know, probably about twice its size. Mm-hmm. Three times as size. Three probably. times as size yeah. and white and yours is black. Mm-hmm. And so Maya just gone. Yeah. <laughs> but she loves to run through that. Yeah. Uh, so you'll just see her head like. Poof, 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 She's like this and little... it's like she loves it, dude. <laughs> yeah. And so immediately when the dogs took off, there was just this feeling of freedom. Mm-hmm. Like letting them off the leash was this feeling of like, now we just doing this today together was letting ourselves off the mm-hmm. leash. Well, and I turned to you and I was like, neat. <sighs> The grass. <laughs> the grass. And, and because, because in my first thought was ticks, dude. Oh, yeah, ticks. Why did we come here? We just did psilocybin. There's no way we're not going to bathe in this grass, you know? It's like, I've done this before. I know where this goes. Yeah. And you were like, they're out of season. I was like, no, they're not. Like It's like they're in season. I was like, maybe ticks aren't as, as, as bad of a season right now. Yeah. And given... Not a single tick. Maybe. Well, it was it was a it wasn't dead, dead grass. I I think we just the 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 gods were with us at that time yeah, because just, we just gave in and it was truly that experience of like the second we got there it was like that freedom. I knew we were going to be here for a minute. I was like, no, we're coming on. I'm fully here now. Just looking at the grass and the wind, I was like, nope, this is it. Yeah. And we walk up to that tree and you show me that tree and I'm like, yeah. Heavy. I got, we got down low and <laughs> yeah. I was like, you see that little, you know, it really is. It's like a, like, I guess you could say butt crack, but it's really a vagina yeah, looking. Yeah, it looks what it looks know, like. Trees have like maybe where the main part grows out of yeah. or like whatever. And it's the vagina of truth. Yeah. You know, that feminine energy when yeah. you do plant medicine is so powerful. Yeah. It's so, he- it's all in us, mm-hmm. that feminine energy. But there's just something to be said about the feminine energy of these plant medicines that are just like, 
guys, I think, you know, the, the universe is feminine as fuck. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so from that time on, we were walking together. We were together most of the time. A little bit. Yeah, we were. And then like, we're looking at the tree. No, but then you, you were gone. So it's like, so like I'm at the tree and I'm standing there and my back is just by this point. So there's something about being, having a sciatica issue. And then when you do even just like smoking weed, once you're high, your body, like I can just feel my nerves differently and I can feel it's like, no, I know where the pain is. I can feel it. I feel the nerve pain. I feel it right now. It's like so bad. Yeah. And so the energy gets like pulled yeah, to where it's exactly where it's like sitting. And so I was just like really overwhelmed with how much pain I was in, but also just like that doesn't matter. Yeah, but your pain looked like this. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, my back. <laughs> I don't care. No, but so you start walking out into the field, like the, you dressed in all white and just like, and you start walking and then you're just like gone. You start running out in the field with the dogs and you're just like gone. And instantly there, I was like, this yeah, is became it. a wolf. Yeah. This became is it. one of the dogs. <laughs> um, right before that, uh, I walked out into the grass and you know, it's like up to like your waist and I'm just feeling the grass like that glide because there's just something about like walking and like, yeah, I love those, the movies we have in our minds that are just like, you know, the stories that we play and then I feel like I'm in a movie. Yeah. You know, being on shrooms is like a movie and, uh, and you're the main character mm. and, and I'm just like feeling it, just thinking like how beautiful this mm -hmm. grass was and I'm looking, you know, the wind's coming at me like this and it's just hitting my face and I closed my eyes and was like reminded in that moment, like right before we started, right? I'm meditating with my eyes closed. And I know that so much of the research and some of the research and so much of the medicine that's being used right now is being used in facilities that are having people lay in beds mm -hmm. with their eye shades and um, they have people in there to help them water. They don't move, right? Mm -hmm. And there's like orchestra and cellos in the background. And so I know a lot of the research shows that a lot of the trauma healing that really comes from this medicine comes from really going within. Mm -hmm. And so when you do something like this and you're going outside, you're being outside and you're looking outside, it's a different experience. Mm -hmm. It's much more, it's playful. It's extremely playful. And, uh, and so I closed my eyes and I looked up and the sun's like here. We started with the sun right above our heads. And at this point, the sun's like here. Mm -hmm. and so I'm like looking to the sun and I closed my eyes and it was just like, Right when I closed them, it was a boom. I like took off. Mm -hmm. And it was just like this vortex of colors that was just like, boom, boom, like oranges and yellows and blues and like sparks. And I was just like, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Like, take me with you. And, but it's really overwhelming because it's just like so beautiful and mm -hmm. so wild. And then I like would look down and it would like the colors would change like deep purples and blues, you know, and then I go back to the sunlight. And then like, I was seeing like flowers start to bloom, you know, like there's like this thing about like the colors and like, I started to see these two yellow lights that were like starting to peel open. Mm -hmm. And I, in that moment I was like, oh, I've been here before mm -hmm. where my reality starts to peel open a little mm -hmm. bit. Like, like the, the, I start to go really inward and out of this universe. And I started to see those sparks again. Mm -hmm. And I talked about before at my retreat where it was like going through a black hole. It was like the reality starts to spark and then all of a sudden it's all and opens. And so I started to realize like, if I keep my eyes closed right now, I'll start to go. Mm -hmm. So I opened my eyes and it was just gone. Then it's the sun like, oh, close them back. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, I can go place with my eyes closed. This is like a choice now. If I want to close my eyes and fucking see my reality splendid too, mm -hmm. I can do that. So that was like unique. And you're like, Nathan, turn around. And you're like a little ways away from me. And I turn around and I just see the grass and it looks like the ocean. Yeah. And as the wind was hitting me and I was having that experience, the grass is just like. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no rhyme or reason. Mm -mm. It's every. Well, it's the wind. It's every. Exactly. But it's, yeah. you can see the wind right mm -hmm. on something. And you're just standing there way in the distance. And so I just see you standing in the grass and it's just this, you're like standing in the ocean. Mm -hmm. And it was like all these tiny waves just, and you were just like, how beautiful is that? And I was like, that is truly majestic. Yeah. <laughs> that is aw like, that is awesome and daunting. Yeah. How there's so much chaos in the wind, but it looks so organized. Mm -hmm. Like there's just something about the ocean waves, right? That it's like surrendering. If you're in the middle of the ocean, surrendering to it is realizing that there are 
waves hitting you here, waves hitting you here, waves taking you this way, pulling you down, pulling you up. So to fight that, you'd die. Yeah. So the only thing you can do is just lay and let it take you wherever Surrender. it goes. So you standing there was like this planted statue or like this pillar of a human being that was just like planted in the middle of this like grass ocean. Mm. And it was just like all going around you. And it was super majestic to mm. see that. And that's when I was like, I got to run. Yeah. Because I was just like, I was like so lost in that. And so then I just took off with the dogs. Mm -hmm. My long hair right now flowing in the wind. <laughs> yeah. All white too. All white. And like my is on my left, just in the grass. And she's got this huge smile. Yeah, and so Amor's on my right, huge smile. And I'm like a dog. Yeah. And I just ran forever. You like, did. And I was just like, nobody could hear me because the wind's just blowing. And I was just like, ha, 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 ha. And I was like, became <laughs> this like child animal. And I was like, started to think the whole time I was like deep breathing, thinking like this is one of the greatest feelings ever is to become one with everything. Mm -hmm. Like just to be a dog and just have so much fun running with the dogs. Like we were just dogs together. And in my head, I thought like, wow, I'm just an animal mm -hmm. and I get to just play with the animals now. I feel like such a kid. It was really, really sweet. Yeah. And got a real nice, like, quick workout in and just was, like, really huffing and puffing. My heart you really, was through you, the yeah, roof. You really ran for a good minute, though, because you ran, like, all the way to the other side of the field, took a quick break. But then you ran back. Yeah. And you were just, like, completely on the other side of the field. And I just have this vivid memory of you, like, running with, like, the most perfect posture, too. And just, like... <laughs> But like with the dogs behind you, I kept seeing Maya's head just come out smiling and at more just like, and you were just like perfect posture, didn't move the whole way. Like, yeah. Through the grass. And I was just like, that is just a, such a candid image right there. Yeah. So it's like, look at his hair. What a goofy guy. Yeah. What a goofy dude. What a goofy dude that is. But that at that moment is when I started to feel, and anytime I've done a good amount of mushrooms, um, not every time it doesn't get inward. But of course, with you, my brother, you know, I, we knew it was going to go inward. We went with intent. It's going to go inward. That was the goal. And um, I was, my intent was to like ask the universe, like, help me understand this back pain that I've had for almost seven weeks now that is excruciating. And then some other, some other really personal yeah, one of the things. Main, one of the main things you, do you want to say it or what your main, like one of, one of your main intents was about like fear. Yeah. Um, fear of being myself. Fear and of being fear, yourself. Fear of, of. Why I'm afraid to be myself in front of other people. In front of other people. Yeah. Um, and what people would think about me. Which um, is a solid intent. And uh, I, the, the, I didn't throughout that experience. And I think it, uh, the universe has an interesting way of showing you what you need to see. And in that moment, I knew what I needed to see. And it's so interesting when you, when you feel that intent from the universe inward tell you something and you're like, oh, that's heavy. And I know that's what I need to think about now. And I Probably started the reason why you're afraid to be yourself in front of other people. <laughs> exactly. And it got deep. And the, uh, what, what I was feeling in that moment, watching you run and just let go and be free. Um, I thought in my head, I was like, I, I should run. I should run. I should try running. And I start running. And, uh, it's like, it feels good on my back, but it doesn't, as I'm running, I'm like, mm, it doesn't yeah. really feel good. I probably shouldn't be doing this, but I ran for like, maybe like, 20 yards or so and exhausted, exhausted. Cause I'm just one, like the allergy started kicking in. I'm cry laughing the whole time. And it's just like really intense. So I stop and I'm like, wow, I'm either really out of shape or this is just really hard and my back's killing me. But, um, I stop running and I'm like, man, I probably look like my dad and that's stupid. I don't want to look like my dad. And I got this weird thought of, I've thought that my entire life. I don't want to look like my dad. Ugh, I don't want to be like my dad. And just got so deep. And I don't think I've ever, like, I've recognized those thoughts before, but I've never really contemplated them in that way of just like, why do I want to look like my dad? My dad's a beautiful man who came from like black belt Taekwondo or whatever. And, and, uh, like has a great, like personality and, and person. And a lot of people find him attractive back in his young days and still is like an attractive man. It's like, why, why am I so afraid to be my dad? I'm not my dad. I'm my own person. I can look like him and be okay with it. And, and I started just to like reminisce on that thought and, uh, try to be more okay with looking like my father and 
be dig inward. And it, I don't feel like I necessarily like, oh, I solved it. I know what I need now. Well, it was funny because you had made two comments and I like in passing when I'm running by you, I like you said something like I just feel like I look like dad right now because I, I made a comment about your shirt. Yeah, it's the same shirt you wore yesterday. And I was like, you know, like I whenever I close my eyes, I get this picture of like the 70s and or the 60s and it's you. And it's like your face like and it was like a million of you like duh, 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 duh. and it was just like you're such a goofball in that shirt but there was such an energy about you that has like that energy like yeah. so easy going and who cares man just have fun like, yeah that's the energy you embody and you embodied yesterday and i was like came up to you and you made some comments about like no like, i just feel like i look like dad and like you didn't say anything negative it's like i just feel like i look like dad and i was running and i finally stopped and when we finally met up with each other i was like you know i just had this vision or this like thing that's hitting me and i want you to know that you do look more like the bloodline on dad's side you do yeah. have more of the blossstone genes mm -hmm. like your body structure the way your head is shaped so it makes a lot of sense why you have these thoughts you know whenever and i said this i was like whenever you look into a mirror you might see a lot more blossstone yeah and um and i was like and you know man like you know whether you know it's not the i know it's not the looks that are bothering you. It's about the path that, you know, this blossom of ours that we love dearly took mm -hmm. that, you know, we developed a lot of religious trauma from mm -hmm. that we've learned how to not blame and we're learning how to not blame and not be victims to. And I was like, you know, when dad was about 18 and I said this to you, I was like, you have told me this over and over that all dad did was got, he got asked in a, in a, lost time of his life or him in a discovery time, he got asked to go into a church, mm -hmm. a, a Christian church and went in there and his 18, 19, however old he was, 17. And he had the vision and that was it. Mm. He had, after that, he got married mm -hmm. and he had a family and he became a pastor. And for the rest of his life, he became part of the dogma and the chains that we call it mm -hmm. and the gatekeeping that is Calvary Chapel Christianity. Mm -hmm. And he was only 18 or 17 when that happened. And I was like, and what happened to you when you were 17 or 18, right? It was like, you started to leave that dogma. Yeah. I was like, so don't forget that it's like, as much as we want to like, that feeling is like living that blame. Like, wow, I don't want to be this. I don't want to look like this. And it's like, well, all he did was get dragged into a church that like, I'm not here to judge anyone's spirituality. I think it's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. But that there is, we talk about in this cast, religious trauma. And we talk about the religious trauma that we developed from the Calvary Chapel dogma and all of that shit. And so like, I just said that. I was just like, you know, that's not, you're, that's not you at all. And that's all I said. Mm -hmm. And then we didn't really like, talk about it much. It was just kind yeah. of like, I just had that thought and yeah. I just said that. And it was like very powerful feeling. Yeah. Because I know I don't have, I look so much like mom. Yeah, you do. You know, on the Calibri side. And Natalie's kind of a mixture of both. And, but you're more of the Blossom. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so I, I just like embodied that with you. I was like, I get it. I get it. Like, whenever I see myself in the mirror, I'm like, so what's the big idea, Donnie? <laughs> Come on, Donnie. And like, even when we're out there, you constantly said to me, you're like, you look so Italian today. Yeah. And it's like, I get that a lot the older I'm getting. And it's like, interesting how our reflections or the mirror shot of ourselves have such a um impact mm -hmm. on our trauma of our childhoods mm -hmm. you know it's like i don't want to look like this and it's like it's not about the looks mm -hmm. it's about what these people maybe did that were like blaming and learning how to like rise above mm -hmm. so that was powerful as fuck it was um yeah but then um this is about at this point, it's already been like about an hour. We've been, at least from what I knew time was. But uh, if I could look at my watch at that time and like, oh, it was like 3.30, I think. And then we started- So much happened in one hour. I know. Um, well, it's like that that initial come on and peak moment is really intense and it powerful. Feels like, it feels like eternity. Yeah, it does. And uh, we went back to that tree, or I went back to that tree, and we started walking back towards that area. And I already knew inside of me that I wanted to climb a tree. Yeah, and uh, I knew I, I could always, I could also tell that it was like, it's a bad idea, but I need to climb this tree. And so you were, you were uh, still off kind of like doing your own thing and kind of meditating in your own way in the grass there. And uh, I was like, ah, I don't need anyone's help. I can get up this tree. And it was, it's not an easy tree to get up. It, it has like a good. I've never gone up it. 15 foot. 
or no, it's like 10 feet up, can't jump, can't do anything. It's just the big branches. So you have to like run up the side of it if I could even go up it. And with my back, it's like, can't really run right now anyway. And uh, so I tie my dog's leash around the tree yeah. in a weird way. And in my head, I'm like, mm, this could work. And so I, I try to get up and I'm holding on the leash and I feel it like, mm, and I'm like, if this breaks, yeah. I fall back, <laughs> I land on my back. And you break it. And it's like, I'm having bad back problems right now. This is <laughs> such a bad idea. And so I stop and I'm just like standing there looking at the tree, laughing at myself, trying to do this and like crying, laughing and just so in like loving this moment too. And just finding it so funny. I'm trying to get this tree. And we had been separated for like 10 minutes this time. And you come around the, the corner of the tree with the dogs and I'm like, oh, the dogs and petting the dogs. And just like you come around the tree and your energy. And I was like, <gasps> it's like your energy is bright right now. I was like, like, wow, man. It's just when you came over here, it was just really like big. It was, yeah, it was heavy. Heavy energy. And you're like, yeah, I know we're really powerful. And I was like, really, I feel it. And you're like, you were like, what do you do? <laughs> and I was like, I'm trying to get up this tree. And you're like, bad idea, but you want me to help you? I remember you just being like, you want me to help you? And I was like, I don't need any help. And you're like, you should let me help you. You should let me help you up this tree. And you help me up the tree. And I'm in the tree. And the second I was up in the tree, it was like quieter. And the wind was a little more intense, but it was just quieter. Whole just different perspective. Whole different perspective. And I was just like, this is very intense. And I was like, but also very peaceful. Yeah, it was the right choice. And uh, so I sit up there for a minute and you were like, I think you should help me up. And, and I was like, you want to come up here? I don't know how you can get up here. And we like maneuvered you up there, but you like, I helped you up. You got up and then you kind of hopped on like this branch above me and we just sat up there like we would when we were little kids yeah. sitting in a tree. And before I got up, you had been up there for a while and we we're both, you know, peeking and it's like really wonderful. And so you, you I help you up and that whole experience of just you being like, uh, it wasn't like all of this is like fun, right? It's goofy. But the way it feels is like, you're like, I don't need any help. And I'm like, man, I think like so much of life is asking for help. And like, if you want to get up that tree, like, I think you need me to help you get up yeah. that tree. Like, that's the only way you get up there. And so that was like a beautiful moment of just like, that's so much of life. It's just like, you want to get up that tree? Like, there's a lot of trees in life that we have to climb to get to higher perspectives, healing, mm. and like, to learn more about our trauma. It should never, like, not all of this is alone. Mm. It should be together. Mm. Not like just us, but like people. You should include a community. That community can be so supportive in trauma healing mm. and getting up those trees to see higher perspectives and like how much the wind changes and everything. Mm -hmm. And once you got up there, you were just up in the tree. Yeah. And I was just like down low and we were just talking. And that's what you said. You made this really beautiful comment. You were like, oh, the way you talk, man, is so wonderful too. It's like, you were just like, Nathan, you know, this is what you said. It was like, I almost started crying. You were like, Nathan, you know, like, uh, we used to be so good at this. We used to just climb. I used to love climbing trees. I have so many vivid memories of you hanging on branches and them breaking and like traumatic things. But like, we used to just be so good at playing together. We were like professional partners in playing. Mm. And I was like, yeah, man, for like, 12 years we mm. did this. We did this exact thing. We just played with each other in a field and in the trees in our backyard. And we were really damn good at playing together. Mm. And when you said that, I was just like, man, that's what we're doing right now. Yeah. We're just like relearning. We're not even learning. We're doing it. Yeah. And when you said that, I was like, I'm getting up. I'm getting up that tree. Getting up that tree. <laughs> and so you like put your foot down and your foot became a lever. And I got up that tree and I went to the left. And then we both straddled these big branches. And it was just like such a different perspective yeah. up there and the wind was so much more powerful so in the beginning of that field it was like the wind was in my face and it was like an ocean all over the grass yeah. and you were like a pillar in the grass and then we actually climbed the pillar of a tree yeah. and the wind was just like <laughs> and it was like not even that high yeah it was just like such a crazy difference just yeah. being up 10 12 feet mm -hmm. and much colder but when the wind it would come in waves and when, when the wind would come it would be like in a mid conversation about something like beautiful and deep and uh about our past and just like our lives and it was just such a beautiful conversation we talked a lot about the podcast yeah we did and uh the wind would come in and be like and it would just instantly be like this world is insane yeah. <laughs> this just makes this terrifying <laughs> powerful wind and i like yeah. how you said waves yeah because that's how i pictured like wind is like an ocean yeah they're like waves of the ocean and they come and go it's like in and out in and out in and out all the time never stopping in all these different directions and it, would, it wouldn't blow us away but there was like this feeling of like hold on and then it go away and you'd be yeah. like hold on and um 
yeah, it was just like two monkeys in a tree, just sitting, shooting the shit, having a, we had one of the best podcasts up there. Yeah. We even made jokes, like imagine we should podcast up here sometime and have yeah. like GoPros and it was so ridiculous, the angles. Yeah. And, um, and I guess in this moment, it's really hard to re- remember vividly the conversation we had, but that's where we had probably one of the best and deepest conversations we've had in a long time, yeah. just vulnerably. And, oh, that's right. You were telling me a lot about you and uh, what your partner, Alex, are doing soon, um, performing together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just started talking about your fears of being in public and mm-hmm. like the, what it's like to do something with your partner and how much of a difference that is. And like, so we just got in this great talk about social anxiety mm-hmm. and like being creative. And I was just like, you were saying things about how like, you know, you just have all this, you know, fear of being yourself in public. And I was like, but you're doing it. Yeah. I was like, this is just a tool for like us today, but you're already implementing the things that you're afraid of in real life. Yeah. You know? And so like, that was just like wonderful to mm-hmm. have that conversation. It was extremely inspiring because I know me and Megan want to do stuff together. Mm-hmm. And it's like, how do you do something with your partner? That's also a creative artist and you're a creative artist. And like, how do you like jump into that? And it's like, well, I guess you just do it like Zach yeah. and Alex are doing it. You yeah. just jump in and do it. Yeah. And, um, and it is scary mm. and it is weird when you like combine that creative public art with your partner. Um, you and I have done this our whole lives mm. and it was very hard at times. Yeah. Like we beat each other up. We got in fights before performances. Blouse was just a, 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 like a tumultuous experience mm. of chaos and wildness that like was full of public creative expression. Mm. And um, I like how the point when you said that when I came up to the tree, like the energy was really bright. It was like a lot of crazy bright energy that you felt right when I hit you, like coming in to talk with you. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, we're powerful. And the way I've always seen us, man, is, you know, you're like this extremely bright sun mm-hmm. that has all of these planets that you're providing energy for, you know, and, and in your life. And, uh, and so when you have another sun that comes in contact, it can be like, if those crash together, it creates like a supernova explosion, <laughs> right? It can like destroy everything in its path. And so much of our past was us trying to orbit. Like mm-hmm. as kids, we just orbited beautifully. <laughs> and then we got older and started to have the trauma set in and we be, you know, started doing blouse together. And blouse was like eight years of multiple, oh, we orbited so well today. And then the next performance would ever be like, and we crashed. Yeah. And it was, everything was a crash. Like, are you, you know, you wanted to do something and I'd try to take control over it and you would get angry and then I'd get angry. We'd fight, we'd yell. It was like two sons always crashing into each other. And when you said that and it felt that, it was like, yeah, this is intense being with each other right now in this moment. It's like too much. Mm. And I think that's why we spent so much time away in that field. And that for that, for the first few yeah. hours to come on. Yeah. And, and, but what's so beautiful, man, is like the fact that we even were able to do that, can't like say these things and then like put words to like that feeling is how it's always felt. It's like, Mm. wow, you're a lot, Nathan. And I'm like, so are you. (laughs) And it's like, so what do we want to do about it? Hang out. Yeah. All right, let's hang out. Yeah. And it's like, that's two sons that pass each other like this. And it's like, yeah. And then they orbit. And it's like, oh, we're, we're good. We're good. We're good. And it's like this crazy amount of energy. And I think that like, it's beautiful that we've gone to that place. Yeah. Because we've experienced so many supernova explosions that have like reshaped our lives. Yeah. And now we are helping shape each other's lives by mm-hmm. being a part of it, by like being in orbit. Yeah. And we know that space and boundaries and distance and like so much of our boundaries have come crashing down. Like all mm-hmm. of our, like both mine and your walls have come down. Yeah. And there's been plenty of experiences over the last month that you like we've both hit each other up. Like I need your help today. Mm. And then you've been like, I got you. Or you've hit me up. Like I need your help. And I've been like, I got you. Mm -hmm. And so I think that was like a really beautiful experience. Like that's why you do the medicine is because you get to live these things in real time and be like, this is what it feels like when you're like on streams together. Mm -hmm. This is a lot. And it's like, yeah, that's how it feels sometime in life. And so that was beautiful. Being in that tree was beautiful. And then the next part was getting down to the yeah. tree. Which I, the second I was up there, I knew it was like, well, that's going to be catastrophic because one with the level of, of change happening from my point of view and what the ground looked like, I was like, there's no way I'm going to do a proper jump and roll. Cause that, that's how high it was. It was like, you can't just like, Oh, jump down. It was like, you're going to have to roll out. 
and uh, I knew that was going to happen. And so uh, there was a moment where the wind hit. Well, we had a, we had a whole, whole conversation about how life is about rolling with the punches. Yeah, rolling with the punches. And so much of blouse and so much of our younger years was like not rolling at all. Yeah. Like every punch was like punching back. Mm. And so, so much of this podcast has helped us learn. Like I've always say the same saying is like, when you try to punch me, I'm going to take that punch and roll down to the ground and take a nap with you. <laughs> and so like, I think that was a really good topic. We were like, Hey, like just got to commit in life. When it's time to get down from the tree, you just, you're going to start to fall. Just commit and roll with the punches. Yeah. Don't let the ground hit you. Like roll with the ground. <laughs> it's not what I did. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm up there and like these things happen so fast. And yeah. when you're like on this, when you're on the medicine, it's like your body becomes like Gumby. Yeah. And, uh, and so the view I had was just hilarious because <laughs> all you did was like, this is like your body. You're supposed to like roll. You're supposed to like roll like that. And all you, you did was you went. <laughs> Well, I just hit, dude. I just fell right to my side. <laughs> all I heard was, oh! <laughs> and you were just like, oh! and like all bent like a movie. And I was like, I almost peed my pants. I was just like, oh my God, you did not roll at all. <laughs> and like, so then it was my turn. And I was like, watch, I'll show you. Like I can roll. And I just was like, <laughs> well, because at the second you jump, it's like you start laughing. You start laughing. Yeah. And that laugh, you're like, you're laughing so hard that you can't really see because you're like, oh, come on. Yeah. like, oh no. I didn't do anything right. I just hit. Right. But I feel fine today. My back now, still hurt. But the crazy thing is that, yeah, when also you're on the medicine, you don't like, you're not like bracing anything. That's yeah. the thing we didn't, you just take the fall. Yeah. And so it was just kind of like, bleh. and then you like get up and it was like, wow, I feel really great. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get out of here. So we dipped out of the field, which real quick, do we, do you want to just keep going and finish this or, um, um, we could probably, that's the most important part of it. We could probably summarize the I rest think, of it in 10 minutes. Yeah. I think like the rest of it was we left the field. And by that point we realized that like, right when we left that field, cause we were there for two hours, yeah, maybe even longer. Like, yeah. It was like a, yeah, like a 20 minute walk. And it was about like maybe almost three hours total by the time that we left that field. We got back around four ish yeah. and we started by the whole one, medicine around one ish. 1245 so. one. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, right when we put the the collars are the um, leashes back on the dogs. It felt like, okay, time to, time to leash back up and we're going to walk back to the house. And it felt like, well, I feel like we were leveling out at that point. That's what I mean. It's yeah. like right when we left the field, it was like, we're good. Mm -hmm. Like we just learned, we just did so much. Yeah. We just like literally <laughs> Whoa, did sorry. so much and off leash. Yeah. Just kids. Yeah. Just dogs or just <laughs> animals in the middle of the ocean, letting it take us. Yeah. And like talking about, dad and talking about church stuff and talking about so much religious trauma and like it was just so much was splayed out on that field i'm telling you there's something about that field there's mm. something about that tree mm -hmm. that is just so peaceful and so there's so much energy out there you know and um yeah and then we made our way back very comfortably back to the house and um uh had some snacks i made you some of my homemade bread with mm -hmm. butter and my homemade blueberry jam mm. And uh, cut up an orange and we just, just ate that shit. And then we laid down and I had some of the most wild visuals of cats. And then a neighbor knocked on the door <laughs> and it was my neighbor and he's very sweet, but he's an older man. And it was just kind of like, of course, and the doorbell yeah. rings, the dogs start barking. You're like, what do we do? So I went well, out no, there. My, my reaction was like, who could that be? Yeah. I was I'm like, like, no one comes yeah, to your house. I was like, I have no idea. <laughs> And it's the neighbor wanting to talk about his trailer. And I was like, would love, yeah. The moment I like run into people, I'm like, close the door. I'm like, let's have a conversation. Yeah. And he was just kind of like, so he's like a really chill guy. He's like, so what, what are you, what are you guys doing today? And I was like, oh man, dude, we've just been sitting in the garden. My brother's over right now. We're just really feeling the, like the life today. You know, it's like one of those Saturdays where we're just going with the flow, just loving life. <laughs> and he was like, wow, that's so cool, dude. I was like, thanks, man. He's like, yeah, you know, I'm taking the family camping. We're going to take our grandkids camping. I was like, oh, where are you going camping? <laughs> and he was like, we're going to go up to Boonville. And I was like, Boonville's just like checkered with all these hidden spots, huh? And he was like, there's so many hidden spots out there. <laughs> I was like, that sounds so wonderful. You take care, brother. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, Nathan's into it. And I opened up the door and I closed it. And you're just standing right there. And you're like, who the fuck was that? <laughs> it's like, oh my God, we're back. <laughs> Um, and then we went on a, um, we went on another adventure, three we hour bike ride hopped on bikes and rode much more in our headspace. Yeah. Much more like emotionally it's all in the inside, but like, well, the real, like, I can't like 
control my laughter, crying. That was all in the field. Everything after that was much more composed and uh, just really vivid. Everything had, was very vivid. We, and we had very intense conversations on that yeah. bike ride. We talked yeah. about everything. We had conversations about like my past relationships and like how I was explained to how I've learned so much in my healing that I dated rejection. Yeah. You know, like so much of my trauma from my childhood was like, I kind of like was finding relationships that were like imitating how I felt rejected by our family and Mm -hmm. our parents and like how that was such like a traumatic thing, which is I was just living that rejection over and over. And then we talked about friendships and how like so many of my friendships have been rejections. Because you chose. Because I chose to be in those friendships and I like never really learned whatever, what was going on until like over the last three years of how that's possible and how like the trauma of our youths can become the relationships of our future. And like, that's a very powerful thing to realize is that like all that pain, if it's unresolved, if you don't have the love, if you don't have pure love from parents and if you feel rejected by your parents and if you feel like mind controlled and you can't just be yourself, you might end up dating that same exact type of energy. Yeah, You might befriend that same energy. So that bike ride was just wild because I was just like, even though I've learned these things, I was like expressing things to you I've never talked about. Mm-hmm. And you were like, man, that makes so much sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it was just really powerful. And, and it was just also like the most beautiful bike ride. So beautiful. We went right. all over. Yeah. We went to like the best parts of town, but it just after this. We went to a lake. Mm-hmm, after this rain, it's just everything's so beautiful and green and on mushrooms, the greens and blues are just like, oh, yeah, it's like, my God. Yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's a consistent wow left and right. But, um, yeah. Came back into the house after that. It was about seven o'clock, yeah. 730. Hungry again. So hungry. So hungry Finally again. really hungry. Yeah. And I, um, heated you up some of my organic pasta with homemade tomato sauce I made the night before. Cause the night before I was like, I want to make a good dinner, but what would Zach want tomorrow? <laughs> like, Zach wants an Italian homemade pasta dish. Yeah. Every time. And so I made you like a, heated you up some chicken pasta. I chopped you up a nice organic romaine salad with balsamic vinegar mm-hmm. and veggies and guacamole or uh, avocado. And we just feasted till like nine sitting on you know the table and i was like you want to watch a movie or something and you were like no <laughs> we should just chill and i was like absolutely i don't want to watch a movie and we just kept talking we yeah. just we talked the whole day yeah mostly besides like those couple hours that we were in the field kind of yeah. doing our own thing um yeah then 9 nine thirty came around and you were like i'm going home yeah and i was like bye <laughs> <laughs> and uh and that's when it was like, wow, we're tired. I'm, and I looked in the mirror and it was like, you're sunburned. Oh my yeah. God, I'm burned. <laughs> oh, I'm thirsty. Yeah. I'm itchy. It's like, wait, we forgot to drink water all day. Yeah. Oh my God. I had like this killer migraine, which I woke up still with this crazy migraine. Yeah. Um, and exhausted. Yeah. I could feel right around nine, which is right around that eight hour mark after we took it, that it was, I was, I was losing the medicine pretty quickly. Not and losing it. You were you are the medicine, exactly. brother. <laughs> but I mean, I was just kind of coming this back, tool. coming back, and my my brain had been so active yeah, for those eight, the eight hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dopamine. Mm-hmm. And I was just exhausted, man. It was hard to even think. Like my thoughts were just like. Ooh. And the way I like say it is like, if you were on the moon for a week and you came back to Earth, you wouldn't have the muscles you had before because you're in zero gravity. Mm. You would need to like slowly work out a little bit to get those muscles back, and it hurts. It takes work. And so I think last night was like, oh my gosh, I've been in space for like a week. Mm-hmm. And then you sleep because you're so tired. And then you wake, we woke up like at the same time at six. And it was like, right when I opened my eyes, I was like, those dreams were rough. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't feel good at all. Yeah. <laughs> I feel really sad. Yeah. And it was just kind of like, wow, coming back to this reality is hard. After like having all this euphoria and perspective and like, especially with you, it was just yeah. like, a lot of my energy seemed to be zapped out. And then you texted me first thing in the morning. Hey, how are you feeling? And I was like, bad. <laughs> you're like, me too. Good not good to be not alone. Yeah. I was like, you're never alone, man. <laughs> you're never alone. Yeah. Um, and there's so much we could talk about on that. But I feel like, yeah, that was great. Yeah. It was great to talk about. Yeah. This is what reintegration is. Yeah. And this is what's like writing. This is like what writing your experiences are. And this is what it does, right? It like solidifies things. Mm-hmm. So that was really beautiful, man, to do yeah, that with you. Definitely. Totally. Um, you feel better? 
Oh, I feel worse. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> no, I've, uh, I think talking about it was wonderful. And there's so much that like, of course we can't fit into an hour. It's like we're already over time. Yeah. Can't fit in. It's like, oh yeah, we only talked about. Unless you want to go like, forest. you know, like how other podcasts do it, where they talk for four hours. No. It's like, no, no, thank you. No, thank you. Um, but yeah, it was just some of the best conversations we've ever had. And there's something about being on the medicine and the way it's not even, it's really hard to explain, honestly, because the way you talk and the way you think and the way you feel is so pure. My thoughts feel so pure. It's like, no, no, this is how I'm feeling exactly how I'm feeling. Right. Let's move on. You know, it's like, it's so easy to see. That ego is just stripped gone, away. Just purely gone. And so when I come out of it and I start re reminiscing on some of the conversations we had, some of the things I said to you, I'm like, those are powerful so because powerful. my ego wasn't there and that's legit how I feel. Yeah. And I think that's like really a big part of the medicine. And then like you kept mentioning today that this reintegrating is part of the medicine too. And it totally is. And uh, we could talk on that for a whole nother podcast, yeah. just reintegrating. Um, but I think just everything we described there is like a really good summary of, of yeah. the beautiful medicinal sides of psilocybin. There you have it, folks. Yeah. <laughs> there you have it, Chantel. <laughs> um, that was beautiful. Yes, I, I love you so much. Love man. you too, man. I had a wonderful time with you. We yesterday. are sons and the energy is real. Yeah. When, we, when we pass each other in our orbits, it's very obvious that we have a lot of energy together and I think we were like really just, it's really wonderful to be kids again and play. And this podcast feels like being kids and playing. Mm. And we talked about doing music again together. So that was powerful as hell. Mm -hmm. And we talked about maybe writing some songs together with my Cajon and Jim Bay and your guitar and maybe some synths with vocoders mm -hmm. and then setting up like a six show tour to LA and back. Mm -hmm. We actually talked about that and we mm -hmm. thought like, how, why don't we just do that again? That's so fun. Mm-hmm. And so I think that that's like in the cards for us too, is to like start something back up mm -hmm. and start doing some live music together again. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, if you're watching this and you're wondering if the medicine works, it does. <laughs> it does. Indeed. How are we looking over there, Chantel? This whole time I've kind of peeked over and I'm seeing such beautiful colors. Like, yeah, bright yellow mm -hmm. and was that purple and reds and mm-mm-mm. I can feel it. The energy is with us today. Everything is energy. You are energy. You mm. are a sun. Talk about another sun right here. Mm. Bright as fuck sun over there. <laughs> like, look out. What's with the aggression, Nathaniel? It's all love, baby. Oh, it's all baby. energy. Anyways. Um, well, love it, Chantel. Love the colors. Looks great. We'll hopefully make up some decisions here when we get done. But before we get done... Mm -hmm. Let's be kids again, buddy. Yeah, let's right? go back to We're our not going to climb trees anymore right no, now. No. We're going to go ahead and go on over to the... <laughs> game cam. Game cam, game cam, game cam, game cam. I love that you were like a little delayed on that one. It's like, yeah, we're, we're tired today. <laughs> You're like, <all>, what? <laughs> <gasps> um... Wave racer. Wave racer. I remember Not golden eye because those controllers are crazy. Wave race Kawasaki Jet Ski 1996. Wow. Two player versus stunt mode time trials. Two player versus right? championship with everybody or just us? Just two player versus. We don't know how long the championship is. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, I'm going to be this honey right here. Watercraft. Settings. I'm gonna hope. I'm gonna be normal. this honey right here. Yeah, green. Handling light. Now we're gonna just do engine. Yeah, that's fine. I think it's the only thing we can do. Okay. Sunny beach. That's the only one we can play. Fine. <laughs> what? Probably because we have to I have to beat these games. Yeah. Right? Oh my like, goodness. Remember what was the game? Yeah. Was a game shark? Was the uh, cheater thing? You could like bring your save over or whatever. Game shark. So you plug it into your control. Oh yes, right. here we go, baby. I don't remember. How here to we play. go, baby. One, two, three, go. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, this is sick. Left, right. I'm already in the lead. Sorry, Zach. Oh goodness. Mm, missed that one. Mm, miss one. This is not good. Miss two. Because you have to go left and right of the buoys. Oh wow, look at these waves. That's crazy. This game is legit. Oh my goodness. I just am always amazed at how tough oh, that N64 was. 
you have to get each buoy? I think you like get, oh yeah, if you miss all the buoys, right? Cause like I already missed three and there's only two left. You got all the buoys already? I don't even know, I, I don't even, I'm just trying to keep going here. Oh goodness. Oh goodness. Oh, I'm in the sand, I'm in the sand. I, I, th these controls are very difficult, I'm not gonna lie. They are really difficult. Everything's like, uh, this is so realistic. Yeah. <laughs> they did a great Final lap. Job. I don't know, Zach, if I, if I win, I'm sorry. Like, it's just brutal that I won so much Mario Kart. Well, is there a way I can like use my superpower or something? Superpower, what? You're on a jet ski. Well, isn't there a way to like use boost? Boost? No. Well, what? This what's, isn't Mario Kart. What's the max power? Oh, you, you get the buoys and then you get Oh, snap. You're ahead by 23 seconds. I'm sorry about it. I'm not. I won. Lovely. Cool. I'm sorry. I don't care. Do you really <laughs> not care? <laughs> that game's tough. Uh, do you want to just leave it at that for tonight? Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was brutal. <laughs> we got to get a, bit, a different game to play, or we got to just keep doing Mario Kart. Yeah, I mean, a game game isn't going to be that exciting every time. No. <laughs> Uh, we got to look at some of the other games that are on N64 that we can play. Yeah, no, we can play whatever games we want. I mean, there's a we do have um, Super Smash Bros. the Switch version on here. Yeah. So oh, we, we do. Yeah, do we could just do that too. It's so hard. I'm. I know I'm gonna lose. I'm happy to win one more before I start. Losing. Before you start losing, yeah. Cool. Um, good job, dude. You're so good at these games. And uh, as I always do, Echo, Garage on. Well, well, this has been fun. It has been. It's been wonderful talking. And Chantel, thank you for branding, rebranding. Um, we plan to do this again by episode, another 30 episodes. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, that's it. We're done. That's Damn it. Man. Thanks for another episode of Moral Combat. Moral Combat. Uh, we'll see you next week. Where we'll we, see you where next we, week. We're on episode 40, right? Next week. Next week is episode 40. 40. That's crazy. Thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.